All right, chapter 10, thinking in objects. You will learn how object-oriented programming being construct using class, data fields, and methods, and how we instantiate and use them. You know the statics, non-statics, private, public, default modifiers, how you access them. What's the difference between passed by values and reference? When you instantiate, it's always do the reference type to the object. Reference to the class template. Now we're going to look at how we can use this object-oriented paradigm to solve the problems. So we look at apply the abstractions to develop software. Explore the differences between the procedural paradigm and object-oriented paradigm. In the old time, program look at things as procedural. Now when we use object-oriented programming, so it's going to make things as object-oriented paradigm. <coughs> we can look at relationships between classes. We can decide program using object-oriented paradigm. Create objects from primitive values using the wrapper class. So primitive type like in, byte, short, long, float, double, char, boolean. They also have the classes for them, and we call wrapper classes. We can simplify programming using automatic conversion between primitive types and wrapper class type. You use big integer and big decimal and we normally use them when we do currencies we don't use double so computing very large numbers with the arbitrary arbitrary precisions to use the string class to process immutable strings we talk about what's immutable right object once created you cannot change the data fields no setters we will use at look at how to use string builder, string buffer, right to process the multiple strings. Multiple string, pretty much string that can be set setters. You can chain them, right? <clears throat> so, class abstraction and encapsulation. So, abstraction means the separate class implementation from the use of the class. Class, the creator of the class provides a description of the class and let the user know how to how the class can be used. It's just like scanner can be an abstraction. You only know that do dot next read dot next dot next in to read in an integers, next double to read at in double. So it's abstract. You only know how to use them, but implementation inside you don't know. Just like a car, you only know how to drive through the escalators and the uh, steering wheels and brakes to stop. But you don't need really know how engine works, how steering wheel or suspension system works, brake system works. So it's abstract to you. Just like when we create class circle. You pretty much don't know what the methods implemented, but you know how to use them by just through the methods and dot operators. <clears throat> the user of the class does not need to know how the class is implemented, right? That's abstraction. The detail of implementation is encapsulated and hidden from the user. So that's why we emphasize the concept of encapsulations when you decide a class. The user should not have an access to the data fields, only access to the methods, which are public, to use them, and do not need to know any implementation of each data, each method. <coughs> so, client use the class through the con contract of the class, like instantiations, right? And then you have access to all the public. 
methods and public constants. You can use that, right? Signatures pass the methods, right? And the class itself has all the methods that the user can use. Class implementation is like a black box hidden from the clients. You only access the black box through the methods and pass the parameters. <coughs> so example of the loan class. So example, if I want you to write an application for a loan. So designing the loan class, you start with abstraction, drawing the UML. You should have a loan and loan should have the annual, annual interest rate, number of years, loan amount, and loan date. <clears throat> so those are the data fields and the methods. We have constructor, default constructor. And constructor, you can set all the data fields, pass the parameters through the signatures of the methods. Constructor. We can get annual interest rates, get number of years, so these are getters, and get loan amount, and get loan dates. So getter is, another name is assessors. And we can set them, set annual interest rate, set number of years, set loan amount. So these are setters. So setters, another name is mutator. methods and we can do get monthly payment and get total payment so this is for the calculations so if you look at after we design a class we can implement them we can look at the implementation of the class Object oriented thinking. So, in the previous chapter, we already learned the basic of loops, methods, arrays. So, the study of these techniques will be a foundation of object oriented programming. So classes provide more flexibility and modularity for building reusable software. So this section improved the solution for a problem introduced in Chapter 3 using the object-oriented approach. From the improvements, you will gain the insight on the differences between the procedural programming and object-oriented programming and see the benefit of developing reusable code using an object and classes. This is not example the BMI class. So we have the name, age, wage, and height. Those are the data fields. All right? The get methods for this data field like get BMI, get status, are provided in the class and they're public. Their fields are private. Okay. So we have more but we cannot, we're not going to include everything in here. And we have two constructors. <coughs> you may review the code later, right? Object composition. Composition is actually a special case of the aggregation relationship. <coughs> aggregation models has a relationship. Represents an ownership relationship between two objects. The owner object is called an aggregating object and its class an aggregating class. The subject object is called an aggregated object and its class an aggregated class. So, <clears throat> by looking at this relationship, we create a class named student to represent an object of student. So this is for an application to use in, a class, in the school environment. And we create a course class to represent an object of course. 
<clears throat> and we know that student going to take course, right? We create a class name faculty to represent an object of teacher. So faculty is going to teach course. One faculty can teach zero to three courses. That's relationship. <coughs> One course can have at least five to sixty students. So this is an aggregating has a relationship. Course has students. Right? Course has aggregating student. So we represent an ownership relationship between two objects, right? Between course and student. The owner object is called aggregating object. Course aggregating class. The subject object is called an aggregated object. So student aggregated class. Course has teacher or faculty. Right, aggregating subject. Aggregating object course. And faculty as aggregated object. So let's look at the composition one more time here. So course is actually the aggregated class, right? And student is aggregating class. Faculty is aggregating class. So aggregation relationship means that students, instead of students, may not exist, but course to exist. Even faculty is not existing, but course to exist. And the aggregated class here can share among other aggregating class. Course can share with student and can share with faculty. So that is the aggregation relationship. <coughs> but composition is, on the other hand, is different. Uh, we look at composition now <clears throat> class representation <clears throat> let's look at an aggregation relationship is usually represented as a data field in the aggregating class for example the relationship in figure 10.6 can be represented as follows <clears throat> public class name aggregating class public class student name address public class address so those are aggregated class can be part of the student aggregating class So aggregation relationship is usually represented as the data field like that. Since aggregation and composition relationships are represented using classes in similar ways, many tech don't differentiate them and call both compositions. Aggregation between same class. Aggregation may exist between objects of the same class. For example, person may have a supervisor. Supervisor is an object of the same class person, which refer to the class itself, person. So that could be aggregation relationship. What happens if a person has several supervisors? 